Millions of families and individuals worldwide have relied on Band-Aids for decades to treat their wounds, cuts, and scrapes. Most of us use them as children to treat injuries like paper cuts and scraped knees, and you can probably still see the recognizable tins lying in your family's medicine cabinet. But have you ever wondered how that Band-Aid is produced and packaged so that it can reach the store and then to your home in a jiffy? Make sure to stick till the end of this video, as we have a lot to cover. Let's dive right in. Origin Story of Band-Aid According to company folklore, the Band-Aid was created one evening at the house of a Johnson & Johnson cotton buyer. In 1920, Earl Dixon observed his clumsy wife Josephine struggling to bandage her wound following another kitchen disaster. Dixon devised a method allowing his wife to care for her own wounds by combining two Johnson & Johnson items, adhesive tape and sterile cotton gauze, and covering it with crinoline, a starched cotton fabric used for petticoats. She only had to cut the required amount from the 212 by the 18-inch roll. Johnson & Johnson was presented with the concept by Dixon, and the business immediately started producing. The words bandage and first aid were combined to create the product name. Early sales were underwhelming, despite the product's claims of convenience and simplicity. Since there were no machines to manufacture the goods, each roll had to be manufactured by hand, which increased their cost. In 1924, the procedure was systematically mechanized. Two years later, the business started making singles in various sizes that were individually packaged. Sales were still minimal, despite the item's increased utility. When America entered World War II, Johnson & Johnson put their Band-Aids in the medical and mess kits for the troops. By then, the business had created a fully sterile product. Sales of Band-Aids started to rise once the soldiers returned to their homes. Sales for Johnson & Johnson surged due to a similar tactic utilized by rival Bauer and Black a decade earlier, which involved connecting their brand with the Boy Scouts. Even though the product itself has remained essentially unchanged over time, its history has seen a few significant turning points, such as the introduction of machine-made Band-Aids in 1924, the sale of sterilized Band-Aids in 1939, and the substitution of regular tape with vinyl tape in 1958, all of which were promoted as the newest advancements in at-home medical care. Healing people up. How Band-Aids work. A Band-Aid is a small piece of sticky adhesive tape with an absorbent pad that you use to cover minor bodily injuries. To prevent the body's natural healing process from being interfered with, the adhesive bandage shields the wound and scab from dirt, injury, and bacteria. The absorbent pad is frequently made of cotton and may occasionally have a thin coating on top to prevent sticking to the wound. Describe a polymer. Polymers are very large molecules consisting of several smaller molecules joined chemically in a pattern. The word polymer really comes from the Greek for many parts. Acrylic polymers are frequently utilized as an adhesive in bandages. Band-Aids have various advantages, including reduced inflammation, bacterial activity, and less apparent scars. They work incredibly well to close small, straight incisions on sensitive places like the head and face. How it's made, Band-Aids. Now let's see how these essential items are made anyway. The production process is spread into many parts before arriving on shelves. Step 1. Choosing and preparing raw material. Adhesive bandages or Band-Aids, consisting of a classy strip of material, feature a blister pad that is centrally positioned with an adhesive section produced on both sides of the pad area. The blister pad is attached to the bandage strip's center Using a strong adhesive, the bag and backing material are frequently made of coated paper. However, occasionally plastic may be used instead. A medicated gel may be applied on the bandage strip without the blister pad to create a medicated bandage for significant wounds. Typically, we utilize woven fabric, plastic such as PVC, pultonide, polyurethane, or even a latex strip might be used for adhesive sheets. The manufacturer determines whether or not to make the bandage waterproof. Methocrates are a type of accurate adhesive frequently utilized in this method. They're sometimes referred to as vinyl resignations. Lastly, the cotton-based absorbent pad is found in the strip's middle. The absorbent pad may occasionally have a thin, porous polymer covering added to it to prevent it from adhering to the wound. In some instances, finding the pad also involves using an anesthetic solution. This is particularly typical when blister dressings are utilized because the hydra will act as a cushion. A small medical dressing can be made using these raw ingredients. Let's now get into the process used to make bandages on a larger scale. Step 2. Preparing the backing material. Band-Aid-like adhesive strip bandages are made from a single piece of bandage material. 
ETS is the substance that serves as the plaster's direct support. This fabric is only flexible in one direction and comes in elastic foams or films. That is part of the bandage that will become sticky. Plasticized PVC foam is a typical backing material that successfully satisfies the desired bow qualities for cushioning and flexibility for stable insertion and comfortability to the body. Although many alternative backing materials can also be used in this technique, it is an excellent support material. Yet, a preferred fabric is PVC elastic foam, which is about 20 millimeters thick and has a bulk density of around 30 pounds per cubic foot. This procedure is quite intriguing. For instance, if we take an 1800 meter length of fabric, we can construct 1.8 million small bandages and 300,000 large bandages. Moving on, it's time to introduce adhesives to the mix. Step three, heating and apply glue. The cloth surface will be coated with a thin layer of glue. As a result, the glue coating will create holes. Then it would be baked in an oven to about 49 degrees Celsius to puff up the material. Step four, cutting and shaping. The bandages we use in daily life are crisp and rectangular in shape. What makes that possible? The fabric will be rolled up into a 300 meter length for that purpose. To acquire the proportions of the desired bandage, these laminates are sliced transversely into the machine direction into strips of wearable length and breadth. If the manufacturer chooses, they may now deposit medical gel or any other material along the center line of the backing cloth. The rolls are prepared for further processing once correctly formed and cut. The little cushioned protecting pads in the middle of adhesive plasters are applied next. Step 5. Preparing the absorbent pads. It's time to start constructing the tiny cushion pads covering the wound and soaking up all the fluids. Cotton is frequently used to make these pads. This cloth is laid out in a big roll and the machine cuts it precisely. The machine blades must be sharpened every six months since they are razor sharp. The cushion fabric is now cut into wearable sizes and rolled in a big roll. It is then divided into small strides. Afterward, these would be further attached to the ETS cloth. As a result, the bandages can now be covered with the cushion cloth pad produced. Step six, fabricating the band-aid. Let's move on to the cutting station, where a machine will create transverse strips from the bandages. The components of the Rose Advantage will be disassembled and organized for the machine that puts them together correctly. The bandage will be created by spreading the soft cushion pad material over the center of the backing material after they have been unrolled and separated. The pad will be attached to the support material with adhesive, which will also be used to attach the release strips. The adhesive is typically applied by transfer coating or another practical method to provide a continuous coating of adhesives over the surface of the elastic base material. The adhesive bandages must then be securely wrapped. Step 7. Wrapping. Wrapping the bandages with plastic paper protectors is crucial. Here, state-of-the-art, fully automatic machines wrap hundreds of band-aids in just a blink of an eye. After drawing it with suction, a robotic arm will gradually insert the bandage between two sheets of wrapping paper. If enough time passes, this machine will become even faster than the human eye and can wrap 300 bandages each minute. Step 8. Perforating holes in the band-aid stripes. The next step is to perforate the strip's aids to the roller. This allows the bandages to be readily separated, preventing them from sticking together. There is yet more justification for doing this. Following that, a bandage machine is used to pierce excretion holes, allowing air to flow and promoting quicker healing. The bandages finally come out of the machine and are taken to be packaged safely. Step 9. Packaging. Then the band-aid strips are taken to the packaging station and packed into sealed envelopes. The packaging is perfectly sterilized before bringing it to the packaging station. The staff at the packaging station keeps an eye on the process. They discard ripped, frayed, or damaged band-aid strips before being sealed. Finally, the sealed boxes are counted and packed into containers, which are then stored and delivered to the loaders. This is how band-aids, a critical ingredient of the first aid kit, are produced, packaged, and transported to the medical stores. Hope you liked the video. If yes, then click on the like button. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Subscribe to the channel as a sacrifice to the gods of the algorithm. Thanks for watching.